Hello, I'm Alexandra Jones. I'm the editor of The Ophthalmologist, and I'm here with Dr. Manuel Dominguez from Hospital Daluz in Porto, Portugal, to talk about Rayner's new Ray1 EMV IOL. Dr. Dominguez, could you tell me a bit about yourself and the type of patients you see at your cataract service? Well, I'm a head of ophthalmology at a private hospital in Porto, Portugal, and I see a mixture of cataract and refractive patients and I'm a high volume surgeon uh, performing around 2000 surgeries, uh, uh, extract procedures every year. And I often present at Faculty, ESCRS, ASCRS, and National uh, Congress. Thank you for the introduction. Let's get started then. What is your patient selection criteria for monovision? Typically, patients who are not expected to tolerate dysphotopsia, as well as patients with affordability concerns about trifocal lenses. Thank you. And before you started using the Ray1 EMV IOL, what was your experience with monovision? Well, I used to perform monovision uh, just in previous anisometropic patients and in some patients uh, with no need for driving uh, and uh, they, some, they don't need to read and some older people. Uh, so actually it was not uh, the first choice for, for my procedures, that's it. That's interesting. So as an early implanter of this lens, could you tell me about your impressions of it and its suitability for monovision? Well, the central region of the optic induces positive spheric collaboration that extends depth of focus. Results from optical bench studies show that the depth of focus can be as much as 2.25 if you use a one diopter offset. This means that the patient benefits from superior intermediate vision whilst maintaining excellent distant vision when compared with standard monofocals. The fact that the aberration is positive rather than negative increases the overlap between the dominant and non-dominant eye for a smoother transition between distance and intermediate vision, maintaining stereo equity and reducing asthenopia. Ray 1 in V, it's a refractive lens and therefore has a significantly lower incidence of death photopsia when compared with diffractive multifocal and extend depth of focus intraplant lenses. And could you share what monovision offset you have been using with this lens? I've been targeting minus 1 to minus 1.25 in the non dominant high. I've been targeting plano to minus 0.5 diopters in the dominant eye. The patient started targeted with minus 0.5 diopters in the dominant eye. They are achieving 2020 for distance vision with a seamless transition between their eyes. Thank you. And could you tell us about early patient outcomes you've observed with the Ray1 EMV IOL? I've so far implanted Ray1 EMV in 60 highs of 30 patients. Bilateral incorrect distance visual equity and bilateral incorrect intermediate visual equity are 6-6, six, six. so spectacle free. Uh, patients are reading N8 at 100 centimeters and N4 at 40 centimeters. No report of this dysphotopsia and uh, very few reported some uh, stenopia in the first month. Patient satisfaction has been 100%. That's great to hear. And what are your thoughts on the Ray1 preloaded system? I'm used to it uh, for four years ago. Uh, it's very quick and easy for my clinic team to prepare. Uh, 
they are only there are only two steps insert the ovd and close the wings i can implement ray one emv through a 2.0 incision and the lens and the injector behave predictably and are very surgeon friendly um, once in the capsule bag, the lens centers very, very well. So. so based on your experiences so far, Dr. Dominguez, are you planning to adopt Ray-1 EMV as a long-term option for your patients? Yes, I think it's important for surgeons to have a variety of lens options for their patients, depending on their lifestyle and post-surgery visual expectations. If I believe monovision is the right option for a patient, then uh, Ray-1 EMV is definitely my perfect solution uh, because the extended depth of full of vision it creates whilst reducing a synopia compared with standard monofocal IOLs. And if targeting a metropia in both eyes, then Ray-1 EMV can provide up to 1.25 diopters of extended depth of vision. And finally, what do you feel is the unique opportunity with this innovation? Well, Ray-1 EMV, it's a game changer in presbyopia treatment uh, with possible use in patients contraindicated for multifocal IOS. Uh, for the large number of surgeons around the world performing monovision, uh, of course, they should certainly be considering Ray-1 EMP, uh, which increases their patient's depth of focus and consequently uh, satisfaction with surgery. Dr. Dominguez, thanks a lot for your great insights. Thank you, Alexander. The pleasure was mine. Thank you.